Good evening, friends. I'm coming to you from Awesome Ass Acres here in East Tennessee. I'm Sharon Anderson. I'm going to be telling a story that's been requested for me to do from a book that I'm writing right now. It's called Sweet Tea and Tales. It's not in publication yet. Hopefully that'll happen pretty soon. But the stories um, are things that's happened to me in my life, and uh, most of them have a little comical twist to them, but they are all true. And there's going to be some poetry and some original short stories in there, so uh, I'll let everybody know if it ever gets published. I hope that'll be soon. But the story that I've decided to tell today is a story called, Whose Reunion Are We Going To?, and this story happened to me in 1974. I was a new graduate of high school. I was 18 years old. And I lived in South Alabama with my parents. And I had decided to ask my best friend at the time to go with me to Oakman, Alabama, which was about a six-hour drive, to visit my grandparents for the first Sunday in May. Now, to give a little bit, everybody a little bit of background about the first Sunday in May, in Southern culture, or in Alabama, uh, and in rural areas, I'm not sure about towns or cities, but in rural areas, the first Sunday in May has been an event that has gone on for my entire memory, and I'm 63 now, so uh, and it's been going on for generations. But it's where churches or cemeteries in the area, in each area, in rural places in the state, would have everybody come together, and that meant people came from out of town back home to their family's home place and meet up. And sometime during the weekend of the first Sunday in May, before Sunday, they would gather at the cemeteries, and they would trim, they would weed eat, they would cut grass, and they would redecorate the graves. So according to what size the cemetery was, there might be 50 people, there might be 300 people out there doing these jobs. So that would happen usually on Saturday. Then around Saturday afternoon, a lot of the families, most that I can remember, would have a family reunion type get together. Well, my family reunion would happen at my grandparents, my maternal grandparents, Manley and Eula Brown from Oakman, Alabama, more specifically Beat 10 community. They were located between Birmingham and Tuscaloosa, about halfway. And this was, in 1974, the interstate systems weren't in use at that point. They might have been around, but I don't think they were completed. So we traveled back roads, country roads. And I had traveled this route many, many times, uh, at least for 18 years of the 18 years I'd been on earth. So my grandparents had had 12 children. Uh, 10 of them had lived to adulthood. Um, there were six boys, six girls. Four boys had lived to adulthood. Six girls are still living today, in fact. One of them is my mother. She's next to the oldest. And so whenever this crowd would come back home for the family reunion first Sunday in May, there would be table after table of food. And it would be music playing. My granddaddy played the fiddle. My uncles played guitars, fiddles. Everybody would bring in instruments. We'd sit on the porch. We'd sit in the yards. We'd sit in anywhere you could find a lawn chair. We'd sit around and play. Then we would, some, you know, at some point, we'd go out and do the graveyard. And then we'd come back and we would eat and we would eat supper and we'd all pile up in different homes for the night. And then the next day we would go to church at our respective congregations and we would have either, some of them would have singing all day, some of them would have preaching all day, but they'd always have a huge meal on the ground, dinner on the ground. So anyhow, this was always something I had looked forward to. So my best friend at the time and I decided to go to the first Sunday in May, get together at my grandparents. So we're traveling up the road in my 69 Volkswagen Beetle. And uh, we'd had about, we probably had $30 between us. I had a full tank of gas 
Uh, we had planned to take that much money to have gas on the way back home. It was about a six hour drive. And for crackers and peanut butter, a Coca-Cola here or there. So as we're going up the road, we're about four hours up the road, so two hours away from my grandparents, and we start discussing how hungry we are. And at this point, we have found that we have passed several, several homes, family homes, that are celebrating and experiencing that same event for Sunday in May. So there's family reunions going on almost at every home place that we pass. There might be five cars in the driveway. There might be 35 cars in the driveway. You could always tell there would be a big table set up outside a lot of times, maybe under the carport, under shade trees, lawn chairs everywhere. So now we're heading to my grandparents and my friend and I are both starting. So we passed this one place, and I'm not sure what community or what town we were in, but I could definitely take you back to the house if it's still standing. And my friend says, Sharon, I'm starving. We've got to, when are we going to get to your grandparents' house? I, you know, I can't, I can't hardly stand it. So as we pass this place on the left, it's a big two-story farmhouse, a lot of pecan trees, oak trees out in the front yard, and probably... 35 to 40 cars and trucks parked out there. And in fact, at the end of the house, there was a big flatbed trailer, similar to a hay trailer, set up, and it had guitars, banjos, bass fiddles, uh, fiddles, leaned up against the trailer and the tires, waiting for somebody to play, and had tables set up. And the tables were made of sheets of plywood sitting on cinder blocks. And on top of that, they had gotten their best sheets, flat sheets, and had spread them out. There might be floral, there might be plaid, there may be white sheets, all different colors, but they would be the best sheets they had. And on these tables, there was food of every kind, you could tell. So people's milling around, so as we pass and we discuss that we haven't eaten our peanut butter and crackers lately, I said, you know what, we're going to take care of this right now. So we go to the next little drive that pulls into a pasture. We turn around, we go back. My friend says, what are you doing? And I said, we're going to a family reunion. She said, Sharon, we don't know these people. And I said, they're not going to know that. So we pull up, and by this time, everybody has made two lines down each side of the table, a line down each side of the table. And they've just started, I guess, maybe, I don't know seven or eight on each side have started out and you can tell there's fried chicken, roast beef, beef stew, meatloaf, chicken and dumplings, every kind of cornbread, crackling bread, uh, hot, I don't know what it's called, Mexican cornbread, just plain cornbread, biscuits, rolls, uh, congealed salads, everything in the book is on these tables to eat. And down at the end, the last one or two tables is desserts. Lemon meringue, jam cake, fruit cake, a chocolate pie with meringue on top, coconut pie with meringue on top, um, egg custard. You name it, it's down there. Chocolate cake that's got, looks like it's got 15 layers. So we get out of the car, and the first thing I say, because we're, there's, groups of people standing around. First thing I say when someone looks at us and notices us, I say, I hope we're not late. We, we got here as quick as we could. Well, everybody, everybody, everybody that was within hearing distance of us all said, no, no, get out. Come on. What are y'all doing? Come on here. We figured you'd get here sooner. So we walk up, we get, we start talking to somebody, and I'm doing the talking mainly. And I say, you know, I'm so sorry we're late. We got a late start this morning. I didn't even have time to bring anything. I hope that's all right. Lord, Jess, get in here and eat. There's plenty of food. Martha's brought that chicken down there. You got to try that chicken casserole down at the middle of the table. Now, you get you, get you some of these plates. Here, get this one. This one's got compartments to it. You can get it filled up. It's a heavy, one of them new chinette 
plates. Get one of those. So they hand us plates, they hand us plastic ware. The solo cups, I doubt there were solo cups back then, but the cups they used were down at the end where all the drinks were, sweet tea, Coca-Colas, lemonade. So we fix our plate, go through, everybody's just sweet as they can be. There's no mention of who we are, where we came from, what we're doing there, who invited us, or what our names are. Nothing. The only mention you hear is, now listen here, we got to get some, I believe these green beans are out of Sue's garden. Look here, she's put some new potatoes in there. I bet you they're from last year. You reckon they'll have a garden that size this year? Well, you know Bob ain't wanting to fool with it. He don't like to get out there. Sue's after him all the time to plant a garden, and he's all the time saying he ain't worrying with it. He can buy it from the fruit stand down the road. Well, then you'd hear somebody say, you know, I think Louise brought them chicken and dumplings, and I believe she made those a week ago. I just wouldn't fool with those if I were you. Well, then you'd hear, oh, Lord, have mercy. Martha has brought that chocolate cake again. It's to die for. She brings that every time she comes. I wish she'd bring some of them fried pies she's done in the past, but she loves to bring that chocolate cake. So we get our plates fixed, and we go and sit down. And my friend has not opened her mouth. She's grinned and shook her head, yes, or nodded, spoke, hello, how are you? But other than that, she hasn't said a word. We go find some lawn chairs and we sit down and we're eating and it's delicious. And uh, we finish our plate and we, different ones have come up and said, you know, did you get some of that lime jello? I believe it's got pecans in it this year. Oh, it's good when she puts pecans in it. Then all, everybody else is finishing eating too. <clears throat> So all the men start gathering up, and they start going over to the flatbed trailer where the, the uh, instruments are. Everybody's picking up their instrument. And this is all, some of them's electric, some of them's got drop cords going, but most of them are acoustic. I think that's what you call them when they don't have a cord to them. But anyhow, so now... People are noticing us more. Their bellies are full. They've eaten chocolate cake. They've eaten pie. We've eaten pie, chocolate cake. Uh, a little bit of everything we've sampled on the table. And now we're sitting there waiting for the music. Well, I know everybody that can hear me knows a lady, usually an older lady, Sometimes they're a spinster or an old maid. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And lots of times they may not have had children. And lots of times they're, they might be a widow. But most of the time they're the ones that no matter what the occasion, they want to find out a, the answer to a burning question. Whether it's... I wonder if she's had work done on her face at a funeral. Or I wonder if that's a real diamond on her hand. Or I wonder what she did to get that new car. You know the kind I'm talking about. Well, here's one in the crowd. And you can usually pick them out in a crowd when you see them. I can, most of the time. So here this lady is, and she's sweet looking. She's got a coordinated, double-knit pantsuit on. Had a little flower in it. I think it was pink. Pants and the little top jacket was made out of the same material. She comes walking up. And as she walks up, I'm thinking, oh, please, please, why didn't we go to the Volkswagen before we ate the last piece of cake? We should have got out of here. She walks up and she says, hey, girls. I'm so glad y'all made it. And I said, yeah, we are too. She says, I just was wondering, how's your mom and daddy doing? And I said, oh, they're doing fine. She says, well, I just can't place you. Um, I can't place y'all. 
Now, who's your mom and daddy? Well, I've been taught all my life that you're not supposed to lie under any circumstance. I don't care what it takes. If there's a punishment coming, don't lie. Just take your punishment and go on. So I say, well, you know, Lonnie and Elna lives down near Gulf Shores. I thought, here we go. Here's where the rubber meets the road. We're either going to be asked to leave or we're going to be have the law called on us and have to wait here for an hour because we're so far out in the country for them to get here. Or we're going to be shamed and kept here maybe until everybody shames us for a while. <laughs> so she says, well, Lord, have mercy. How are they doing? And why didn't they come with you? So, we escaped because this sweet lady was either so taken back by not knowing who Lonnie and Eleanor were, but she wanted to play along with the game, or there's really a Lonnie and Eleanor somewhere that lives near Gulf Shores that has a daughter that goes to this reunion all the time with her best friend that drives a Volkswagen Beetle. I don't know which one it is. But anyhow, I said, oh yeah, you know, they, they, they would love to have come, but we got off without them. And now we just, we just hated we didn't bring anything. You know, we just, and we, were, we, hate, that, we hate that we were late. Oh, that's no problem. Listen, Y'all have got all the way back. You going back tonight? Y'all can spend the night here if you want to. Oh, no, we wouldn't hear of it. We got to get back. We got to get back. Well, I tell you what. You get over here and make your plate to go. And we did. And then, as we leave, she follows us to the car. Now, let me tell you something. You tell that Lonnie and Eleanor that next year they better have themselves here, too. And y'all girls, you come back here, and don't you be late next time. Don't you worry about bringing no food. We'll have food here to throw away tomorrow. Don't you worry about that. You bring yourselves. Get here before everything starts so we can all visit. And you tell your mom and daddy they better get here, too. So we left with plates piled full of some of the best food, you have ever put in your mouth. Drove the other two hours to Oakman, Alabama, to Manley and Eula's house, got out, got greeted by aunts and uncles that said, where have y'all been? Y'all be getting here in the middle of late afternoon, almost evening. Y'all just getting here in time for supper. Well, we weren't even hungry. So we go in, and of course, I could not hold back telling them what we had done and where we had been. So my mother, the saint she is, said, Sharon, I'm ashamed. I can't believe that you'd stop off somewhere and lie about going to the family reunion and you don't even know anybody there. I told her, I said, I didn't lie the first time. And I didn't. But just remember, folks, if you're ever at a family reunion and you see two young women, young men, that's come in, made themselves at home. You need to either, if you really want to know the answers as to why they're there, you need to be a little bit more prying or you need to invite them to get another plate to go. Like this lady, she was as nice as she could be. We had a wonderful time. We had a standing invitation to go back. We never did. But it was a time that I'll never forget, and I doubt they will either. And uh, if I ever am back down in that area, I will stop by that house and see who lives there now. Y'all have a great evening and stay well and enjoy your time with your family while we're cooped up with each other.